So if we look at uh, treating the entire metabolic iceberg, what we're saying is that impaired multi mitochondrial biology, multiple facets of it, results from the factors at the base, and those are related to our modern environments and lifestyles. And so we can alter those, and I think we need to alter them by looking big picture, by using strategies that actually induce or optimize something called mitohormesis. And mitohormesis, uh, I think, is the key to doing this. Um, basically, mitohormesis is involving, involves multiple mitochondrial exposures to a challenging but not overwhelming stressor, something they can handle, each of which is crucially followed by a complete but not excessive re recovery period. And it's during that recovery period where the mitochondrial biology changes, it's reconfigured and in a way that allows the mitochondrial population to um, sort of uh, be exposed to that same stress or, or even a higher dose of it in future and come out okay. So this is key. And um, it's important to recognize it's not focusing on the challenge period or the recovery period in isolation. That won't work and that's harmful. It's this oscillating balance between challenge and recovery that we're aiming for. So that's why uh, a lot of things that people try, such as exercise, take it too far. Uh, excess challenge, not good. You need adequate recovery. Um, that's just one example. It's the oscillating balance that uh, induces optimal mitohormesis. So that being said, some evidence-based strategies for mitohormesis in the neurodegenerative, disor neurodegenerative disorders would be as follows. So environmental factors on the left, challenge phase in the middle, recovery phase on the right. So we know that industrial toxins pr probably trigger these disorders uh, to a very large degree. So you wanna create an oscillating balance between low transient exposures and zero exposures. For uh, dietary lifestyle, we want to have an oscillating balance. I'm glad Mike and Chris both mentioned ancestral diets because I think those create the best challenges. The Western diet, quite frankly, creates an overwhelming challenge for mitochondria and it's damaging. But if you oscillate between ancestral diets diets and periods of fasting, that is the best way to induce mitochondrial uh, hormesis or mitohormesis. Now looking at cognitive, physical, and social lifestyles, um, the challenges, periods can all involve uh, periods of cognitive stimulation, exercise protocols done correctly, and social engagement. And this is what the data shows for neurodegenerative disorders, uh, that these things um, at, at certain levels can be helpful but just as crucial as the sleep and relaxation periods. So you need to have these uh, recovery-based strategies that complement the challenge ones if you wanna induce mitochondrial hormesis optimally. So a lot of people focus on the challenge phases too much. They focus on ancestor di ancestral diets, great. Cognitive simulation, fantastic. Exercise, good. Social engagement, good. But we really need to focus on this side of the, of the mitohormesis chart more, the fasting, sleep, and relaxation in particular. The recovery is where the mitochondrial biology actually improves. The challenge is designed to mess it up. You need to have proper recovery periods if you wanna get optimal mitohormesis and health in the long term.